Hello, Mount Rudmore here, and I am back to talk some more BP25. Um, it has been a messy few days, and an especially messy last uh, 24 hours or so. But, um, first of all, I just want to... <laughs> so, I, I just want to explain. My last stream that I did was on Saturday. Uh, when I did that stream, the feeds have been down for a little while at that point. You know, typically, I'm used to like four or five hours. Well, not even that, more like four hours tops for the feeds being down for the veto. So I started that stream in the hopes that, you know, maybe by the time I got to the end of it, the veto will have ended and we would have gotten the results. Uh, that did not happen. So I, uh, one of my side hustles has been playing the, the original Game Boy Pokemon games and writing a blog about them. So I figured, eh, well, maybe if I play for a while, that'll bring the feeds back. And still nothing. And by 12.30 a.m., Eastern Standard Time. There was still nothing. And it still took approximately 12 more hours from there for the results of the veto to finally be revealed. It, it was like 18 hours, I think, the feeds were down. But they finally come back, and Heisem has won his third competition in two weeks because this is he is the HOH, and he has just won is second veto, and there have only been two vetoes so far. <clears throat> so, yeah. For right away, I'm just thinking he's he's very against backdooring, so he's probably not going to use it. Then it becomes clear that something funny happened with the competition involving Matt. And, like, it seems like no one's really able to talk about it, but all you can gather is that Heisum will not put Matt up after after whatever happens. I just realized I didn't have my, my mic out. I mean, it still works, but still. Anyway. Um... It's probably something to do with what I was talking about last time, the, the major lack of accommodations they've had for Matt so far. And you know, it's like, it's nice that they finally cast a deaf contestant for the first time ever, but they should have been nicer, nicer to him in regards to accommodating him. Root beer today, by the way, if you were wondering. I mean, I said this before, deaf people absolutely have a right to to play Big Brother, to compete in the Olympics, do whatever they set their minds to. But there should be some kind of reasonable accommodations, and it still doesn't seem like Matt has too many. <coughs> All I know is Heisum does not want to put Matt up after whatever happens. Um, so this is this is the initial talk of this. Uh, it's going to pick up a lot more later, and we will get to that, but this is still on Sunday. Um, Jag and Riley are talking to Sari. Sari tells, tells them she's open to a vote flip against Cameron. But no one can know about it. No one can know she's in on it. Like, they can't even tell Blue, who Sari knows they're super close to. But then Sari later says to Jared, nah, I'm not flipping. So, that was the end of that particular conversation. And Sari tells Izzy that she does want Riley out, but finds it curious that Cameron is looking a little too comfortable. And says that with Jag and Blue voting, they do have options. 
Also, Cerise kind of starting to feel like Heisum is becoming a bit of a dictator. Which uh, my dad, the casual, was starting to pick up on in Sunday night's episode. He also felt that, well, I don't know. I don't know. He might not have been getting dictator vibes. I don't, I don't know if my dad was getting the tater part of that word completely. Uh, Cameron tells Jared that Heisum is is a dictator. He's acting like a dictator. And he's the one who's drawing lines in the sand. Jared rats this information out to Suri. And if Suri so chooses, she could absolutely bury Cameron with this information. Just tell Heisum, and Heisum will be like, oh, okay, never mind. I want Cameron out. Does she reveal that? Mm, well, we got a lot more to talk about. Um, Corey and America, they're talking about, like, where they stand in the house and, like, where the power is. America says they can't be afraid to take shots just because they like people. And, like, at this point, I'm starting to think, you know, in America, H-O-H. Cue the, uh, cue the Monique gif. I would like to see it. And then Riley comes in, tells them that, okay, so Sari told me not to tell anyone this, but she might be on board to keep me. And now I'm thinking, you're doomed. Corey tells Sari that Riley said, you promised Riley that you would vote to keep her. To be clear, Suri never said she's definitely doing that. She said she's open to a vote flip. So, yeah. And sometimes, sometimes these people are just too talkative for their own good. Riley's had this problem a lot, saying things she shouldn't be saying, doing things she shouldn't be doing. I mean, her whole HOH was saying and doing things that she shouldn't have been doing or saying. So Jared talks to Sari and Izzy, and this is where things are really starting to get interesting. Jared tells them that Corey and Cameron Juan Heisum out next. And Sari says, it's got to be the first time that he doesn't win the veto. Yeah, for all Heisum's talk about how anti-backdoor he is, like backdooring is dishonorable, much like what would have been the case with me if I was there, all these people just want to backdoor him more now. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry about that. Um, Jag and Blue in America are talking. And now they're starting to talk about how maybe voting to keep Riley might not be in our benefit. So just doing what the house wants. Okay. I was not picking my nose, I was scratching. Um... You know, I was already feeling like America was kind of iffy on working with this side of the house, and I do feel like she's basically started to gravitate more to the others. And they say that, like, the other side won't work with us if there's a split, but here's the thing. The other side, honestly, at this point, is everybody except Jag, Blue, and Matt. And Riley. This... It honestly... 
is really starting to seem like there's an 11 person alliance in that house which Riley was kind of trying to do <laughs> but now she's not in it it's it's too big all these alliances are too big and it's like i mean they'll start turning on each other sooner which might make it interesting but you know starting things off like it isn't the most exciting thing to watch Excuse me. Tori tells Jared that if he wins HOH, he's going to put up Red and Bowie initially, but they're pawns, and he wants to backdoor heist them. And at this point, Corey is just as annoyed as certain other people with Heisem's high horsing. Hello to my first viewer. I just noticed I have one viewer now. So Corey's telling this to Jared, and now I'm thinking, Jared can bury Corey if he wants. Please bear in mind, the veto meeting has not happened yet. So if, for whatever reason, Jared was like, you know what? I think I want Corey out right now. I'm going to go tell Heisem this. Tell him what he said. And then Corey immediately becomes the target. So this uh, this was really where things started to take a turn for for Heisem. There was a meeting of the Professor's Alliance, which is Heisem. I just want to make sure I get it right. Heisem, Suri, Felicia, Izzy, Mimi, Red, and Bowie. Yes, that's it. Um, Heisem, he doesn't say who he wants out next. He says who they all want out next. He's speaking for all of them to their faces. He's like, I'm telling you what you want. Interesting. Heisem tells them that they want Jag out next. And that they're most concerned about a blue HOH. She hasn't won anything yet. I mean, to be fair, two people have won anything in this house so far. <laughs> Heisem and Riley. I mean, like, the only other people you could make a case for are, like, the people who came in first in their competitions on premiere night. So America, Matt, and Jack. But that's that's a stretch. Those cons weren't to win. It was just who could finish first. I mean, which three could finish first? Uh, he calls Corey Cody again, starting to look intentional. It's like, like this is something that always annoys me when they still call the vice president Kamala instead of... No, they still call her Kamala instead of Kamala. It is Kamala. It's like, it, it's it's been three years at this point. You're just... You're just being a jerk, deliberately. But yeah, he's just talking way too much and very egotistically. And at this point, I'm just thinking, I hope they're still willing to take him out the first chance they get. And Sari and Izzy, later on, they do say they want him out ASAP. Izzy doesn't like his weaponization, basically, of integrity gameplay. Like, that's what he talks about. Like, I'm honorable. I have integrity. All that stuff. He feels that he's weaponized that. And because of that, she does not want him on jury. And to be fair, Isom does strike me as a pretty bitter juror. Um... Then later on, Heisem is talking to America. He tells her that he wants to work with her in, this is a, a term he likes, a post-Riley world. It's, 
it's week two. It's just so stupid. And he tells her that Sari and Felicia don't trust her. They don't trust you, America. Like, once again, you're talking too much, bro. Uh, we get a uh, we get a cam talk from Corey. He says that uh, Red and Bowie aren't doing too much. To be fair, they aren't. But you know what little they are, they're doing some stuff, but nothing around him really. Uh, Jag isn't really like pivoting gameplay wise. He's still just kind of stuck in what he wanted to do right away, and he's not really changing it. Uh, he says, Blue, I love you, but you're not that good. And, um, same. My first round draft pick was Blue. My second was Jag. My third was Matt. And my fourth was Cameron. And, and my fifth and final one was Isom. I, my, my team is letting me down six ways to Sunday so far. <laughs> Like, I just feel like none of them are particularly long for this show at this point. Uh, I was agreeing with Corey on most of these points, but then he says he doesn't think Felicia can win. I don't think that. You know, Felicia's another one who's not really gaming too much around Corey, but she is gaming. She's just... Corey is pretty irrelevant to Felicia. Now, I'm not saying if she wins the next HOA, she's going to put him up, but... You know, if if they're both in, like, the final eight or so, and Felicia wins HOH, I could see her taking a shot at him. Um, this was kind of an interesting perspective on the whole targeting Heisem thing. Points out everyone's targeting him. But he thinks that it's a bad move for Sari. And I get that, but... Look, I'm sorry. Three competition wins in two weeks. No, I'm sorry. That's... You're, you're, doing, you're doing too much. You're doing way too much. And... And, you know, it It might be a little early to start making Michael comparisons, but at the end of the day, Michael did win the first three vetoes last season. And he won a total of nine competitions. They, they got him out on only the third HOH cycle where he was even possibly vulnerable. Every other week, he was either HOH or had veto, or in some cases, both. So, there is this thing of, like, why are we talking about too soon when there is most definitely an, a possibility of it being too late? I, I agree with uh, Sari and Izzy, honestly. They should take him out the first chance they get. You know, they're, if he's playing in the next veto, pretty good chance he'll win that, too. And really, Michael himself. Then just like Michael, he will have had three, the first three veto wins. And also, Corey feels like he's kind of playing a, a Steve from BB-17 game. You know, just kind of laying low, taking it all in. You know, maybe being a little awkward, getting in a little bit of trouble, but nothing too severe, nothing game-breaking. And, uh, Listen, I think Steve is honestly my second favorite winner of all time after Taylor. So, uh, you know, if you can play a Steve game successfully, then go for it. I still don't think Steve gets, uh, he doesn't get all of his flowers as far as BB winners go. I truly think he's one of the better ones. Because he was... He was kind of under the radar, but he was very sneaky.
And the fact of the matter is, he won four HOHs, including the final one that took out the person that otherwise was definitely going to win that season, Vanessa. So, yeah, Corey, if you can, uh, if you can make the Steve game work for yourself without people being like, oh, wait, you're playing a Steve game. Steve won. We don't want you winning. Get out of here. The key to playing a Steve game is keeping it kind of low-key for a while. And then really making a push at the end. So this was, uh... This was more of Heissam having a classic case of HOH-itis. HOH and veto itis, I would dare call this. Um, he talks to Riley. He tells her that he plans to tell the House at the veto meeting that he wants them to vote her out. He's telling this to her face right now. Are you serious, dude? How much of a jerk do you have to be? <laughs> yeah, so much integrity. He later tells this to, uh, to Cameron as well. That that's what he's going to do, just to be like, eh, don't worry about it, Cameron, you'll be fine. Of course, there would be uh, something in my mind going like, if you're that much of a jerk to her, and people find some sympathy for her, that that could be a problem for me. For me, Cameron, the creepy guy sitting next to Riley on the block that no one really likes. <laughs> Uh, Riley tells Matt about this, and Matt tells her to cry and try to get sympathy. Ordinarily, I do not advocate weaponizing tears. But Heisem has, like what Izzy was talking about, weaponized integrity and being honorable. So... All's fair and love and big brother. And as far as as far as Cameron goes when he hears this, uh, like you know, his brain does not work the way mine would in this situation. He's just talking about how much he respects Heisum because of how Heisum respects Hufflepuffs. I'm serious. A large factor of Heisem's strategy and game plan is Hogwarts houses. Oh my god. And, you know, dig through my Twitter deep enough, you will find my thoughts on, uh, on the author and some of the things she says. And, long story short, Comparing Heisem to to something Harry Potter related, that's just that's not some that's not an association you want me to make. So more of this uh this nether twist. Um Jag had disappeared for a while. And... <laughs> okay, I gotta talk about the episode just for a second. First of all, the whole thing was really cheesy. I mean, I I liked the idea of the HOH competition, but just the cheesy acting, the, the monster that was just a... just a stuntman wearing a mask walking on stilts. It was just so silly. And, like, I'm used to Silly competitions, but just this whole season, it has been really next level. It's like, stop trying to make all these people act during the... and, and try to recite this very obviously scripted DR stuff. Like, there is a writer's strike and an actor's strike going on. Like, j just, just stop. It's borderline scabbing. 
But anyway, that was that was that was my thoughts on, on the HOH competition, which, as we know, Heisem won. And um, Jared came in second, and he was sent to the the Netherlands for a while because that's what I'm calling the Nether. I don't want to call it Nether region anymore. I'm calling it the Netherlands. Jared went for a while. He came back. He got to choose somebody that would go next, but that person would be safe. And it ended up being Jag, and he disappeared in a cheesy special effect. And then he appeared on the memory wall during <laughs> during the nomination ceremony. And it was just so funny to me. I was just like, <laughs> he's just hanging out up there, looking all dearly departed. It's like, come on. You're just looking silly now. But Jag did eventually come back, and he... I don't know if Bowie got sent to the Netherlands, or or what happened there, or if just something something went on with her. I don't know. I've, I've seen Bowie more in commercials for the season than I've actually seen her on the show. Or on the feeds, even. But anyway, with Jag picking Bowie, there's now speculation that Bowie will possibly get to remove somebody's vote on eviction night, which would prevent a tie from happening, because it would only be 11 votes. Uh, Heisem convinces her to pick Matt, if that is the case. Because... Well, Bowie agrees, because then he can't vote for his girlfriend. They're really... They're really running with this... Uh, this showman's thing. Like, it's not a thing. Riley and Matt are, are friendly. I haven't really seen showman's yet. The reason I haven't seen showman's yet is because if it were a showman's, then people might be, certain people behind the scenes might be trying harder to uh, influence a vote flip to get rid of Cameron. Anyway, Heisem does not use the veto. Turns out he did go there and just tell the House, I would like you all to vote Riley out. He said this in front of everybody. Um, afterwards, Corey says to America, Heisem's going to be gone in two weeks after that. America says, hopefully, but she warns him not to say that to anyone. Just in case. Riley is angry at Heisem for what he said. Jack said he didn't have to go that far. And Riley basically calls him a hypocrite for for doing that to her, despite all his talk of integrity and inclusivity and playing with honor. So yeah, he, he's definitely a hypocrite. And he Heisem does apologize to Riley. He says he didn't mean for it to come out that way. What exactly is the right way to say vote Riley out in front of everyone, including Riley? H how? How does, how does that work? And it's at this point that I'm thinking I want the vote to flip. A, because Cameron's a creep. B, because I want to see the look on Heisem's face. So this was the point where I was already thinking, I want there to be a vote flip. I had very low hope for it at this point, but I'm thinking, I want to see it. Uh, Red talks to Cameron. Red says the worst case scenario is Jag or Blue winning HOH. Um, and, you know, the worst case scenario for Red is still not that bad. He might see the block. He might be nominated as a pawn, but I do not see him leaving. Isom would be the target, but 
if if they're unable to get him, there's definitely a few other targets ahead of him. Like Izzy is definitely a target for the other side. Or Bowie, potentially. And then, of course, if someone within the Professor's Alliance wins HOH, even if they do decide to go for Hysum, but then they can't, then they're just going to go for someone on the other side, like probably Jagger Blue. So yeah, I just... Red... Red really has nothing to worry about, I don't think. He just kind of has to keep doing what he's been doing. And I mean, he's... He's been playing the game I wanted Jag and Blue to play. Just kind of laying low, but not really in any trouble, and just in a comfortable position. Jag and Blue, laying too low, not in a comfortable position at all. You know, obviously neither one's going this week. I think that the chances of either of them going next week are not zero, but not, like, guaranteed 100%. Like, even if someone in Suri's group were to win HOH. And uh, Cameron also says to Red that he doesn't really feel the need to campaign. And once again, I'm thinking, you're asking for it. You have to campaign no matter what. And that's just another reason that I wanted to see a vote flip. I want to make something perfectly clear. I don't like Riley. I think she had a terrible first HOH on par with the previous two first HOHs we had, Frenchie and Smelvis. But Cameron is just... Cameron has not said anything I have liked, gameplay or otherwise. He has not said one thing in that house that has made me go, oh, okay. Yeah, I see your point. Literally nothing. At least Riley has some self-awareness now of, of just how, how bad her situation is. Karen's too comfortable. I'm sorry. If you're too comfortable on the block, if I was in that house, I'd at least consider voting you out. You know, unless it was against someone I was really close to, obviously. But yeah, it's just he's too comfortable. He's way too comfortable. Sorry, sweating a lot. It's kind of hot in this room, and this doesn't exactly. Do wonders for my body heat. Um, Jared talks to Riley. He tells her not to say anything, but Hysom was willing to put up Jag and Blue. Now, I could have potentially thought of this as like a strategic thing, trying to sow chaos and get Riley in more trouble. If it was somebody else, I could have believed this. But Jared is way too clumsy with his information. So, I, I don't think it's strategic. I think he's just saying too much again, which he's done many, many times so far. So, we have the first Mimi storage room uh, self-talk of the day. She thinks that everyone is too emotional about Hysom's speech. Thinks her alliance shouldn't target him, at least not right now. And I mean, like, I do admire, like, some of the cutthroat parts of that, like, you being too emotional. I get that. But, at the same time, I feel like Hysom is kind of doing it to himself with how big of a head he's gotten. 
for one reason or another, Luke talked himself out of the house. Hurston talked herself out of the house. Riley, probably about to talk herself out of the house at this point. Isom, he's kind of following, well, maybe not the same trend as Luke, but the other two, for sure, just doing too much that doesn't need to be done. Um, Sari tells Riley to have an honest heart-to-heart -heart with Felicia and Izzy, because they didn't like Isom's speech either. Uh, Riley tells Izzy she's sorry about her HOH, how it went, and that if she stays, she wants to get to know her better. And I mean, she's definitely campaigning more of the two nominees. <laughs> it's something. Cameron's doing nothing. He's too comfortable. I don't know how many times I have to say it. Um, Sari, at this point, is seemingly talked out of saving Riley by Izzy and Jared due to Cameron just basically being alone in the house. But Riley has still a pretty solid core of people. Uh, I mean, Cameron doesn't have too many people, but he has Heisem and Red. Arguably the, well, two of the best positioned guys in the house right now. And I'm sorry, but Riley has aligned herself with people that so far have been kind of not too great at this. And they're like, we want Riley out and Cameron and then Heisem. So that seemed to be where things were standing. However, we got some chaos that I had a lot of thoughts about, some thoughts of which got me in trouble on Twitter. But you know what? I I have died alone on Big Brother-related hills before. I'll do it again. I don't care. So, it starts with Corey talking to Sari, Izzy, and Jared. He says that Heisem Seems to be spiraling. Tari doesn't like his integrity talk. Corey mentions that Heisem wants to work with more physical competitors. People like, uh, like America. And the more they talk, it's like the more they hype themselves up. Th this is probably in part due to Izzy being in the room. And Izzy can hype herself up with very little motivation. Uh, Sari notes that if Riley were to stay, Heisem will spiral. And I'm like, yes, this is this is what I want. This is what I was wanting. Corey says Riley would not touch any of them if she were to stay in this house. But Cameron, he might. And Riley has seemed to indicate that she doesn't really want to win another HOH anytime soon. At this point, it's looking like Sari and Izzy are on board. They say they're on board, but, you know, I've been tricked before. Sari says that Jared will get more information out of Jag and Blue, see if it all checks out. But, she does say that she didn't like how Heisem said in their professor's meeting, no new alliances. Or at least, if one is offered to you, you then tell everybody else. But he said no new alliances, and yet he's seemingly been doing just that. 
And then Izzy starts Izzying. About Hysom. She can't wait for him to blow up. Because he's digging his own grave. And, you know, Izzy, you know, she's she's in her hype, amped up state. And she's like, oh, you know who I need to tell right now? Mimi. And this is where... This is where things shift. She tells it to Mimi. She does not like it. And I'm thinking she could very easily rat this plan out to Heisem, and that would ruin it completely. Uh, Mimi is saying, we have to take Riley out now, or she's going to make it to the final three. How? All Riley has is people who haven't won any competitions yet, and barely know how the house is even operating. Like, Riley is definitely someone that can be kicked down the field a little bit. Uh, Mimi, you are in a seven-person alliance. You could turn on Heisum this week and get Cameron out. You could kick Heisum out next week. And then you still have a six-person alliance that could get Riley out at any time. Mimi is seeing some kind of path to the end for Riley that literally nobody else can see. So, of course, Mimi's not on board with this. And in time, Jared and Felicia, the more they talk about it, it's like they talk themselves out of it. So, it was a nice thought, but it seems to not be happening. And then we get another Mimi storage room camp talk. She can't believe people are daring to question a plan in the Big Brother house. We have to take the shot at Riley now, or else she's gonna last here forever, because no one could ever possibly win that would want to take her out. Why is everyone so emotional, she says, as she's huffing and puffing around the storage room, all upset about people talking things out. Yeah, th this is what got me in trouble. I... What I said was, everyone seems to be thinking Mimi is level-headed, but she's starting to come off a little more uptight to me. Because, listen, rigid, unquestioned plans in the Big Brother house are boring. Part of what made the, the modern era of Big Brother so lacking. Just, we just, just, everybody gets together, a big group of people, they decide what's going to happen, and then... It happens, and nothing happens in between. And then we move on to the next week, and it's just more of the same. That's boring. You know what's fun? Vote flips. Alliances turning on each other. So yeah, I ain't apologizing for... for wanting the best possible thing to happen. Which would be Cameron leaving, and Isom... His face melting like the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark, if that happened. But yeah, like I said, I've died on Big Brother Hills before. And I, I stand by it. I, I, sure, it might not be the best move, technically speaking, for people like Sari or Mimi. I don't care. It'd be funny. I'm watching a TV show for entertainment, and the episodes so far have been ridiculous. I want something juicy to happen. All right. <laughs> Time for my favorite part now. Checking updates. Oh, I hear my my neighbor's dog barking again. Does it all the time.
Sorry, just going through a lot of... There's a lot of stuff on the timeline right now. It's a... It's a busy time in the world right now. Sorry. Ah, oh, nice. Sharon. Sharon Tharp. Number one BB insider. Uh she already did she just did an interview with uh with Taylor. Now she's gonna be doing another one with Xavier. Okay, so there's nothing Big Brother related other than Sharon interviewing Xavier on my timeline. So, time to go to BB Updates. Well, I see Heisem still being a jerk. He said to Matt, and then he said separately to Blue and Jag, I have the votes. Don't be stupid. Nice guy. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out if, like, I mean, Heisem's talking to Red right now, and Heisem's so confident that Riley's going to have zero votes to stay. Oh, yeah, Heisem has some really weird sleeping positions. Like, he's, he's always just, like, halfway hanging off the bed. He's just, like, face-planted on the floor, and then, like, the rest of his body is up on the bed. Is this some kind of weird physical exercise thing he does with his sleep, or does he just have something wrong with him? Yeah, I, I still can't tell where everybody stands right now. I would imagine probably not not doing the fun thing, which would be flipping the vote. My guess is it's still going to be Riley leaving, and honestly, I think it's more likely that Heisem gets his way and gets a unanimous vote to evict Riley. Because that's always fun, isn't it? Unanimous votes. So fun. So much fun. So yeah, uh, that's that's where we're at in Big Brother right now. Um, I'm still gonna. I I really hate that this show has made me start to actually try manifesting stuff like with a straight face. I don't know why. Caitlin, what did you do to me? But yeah, I'm. I am manifesting a vote flip. I am manifesting that that enough people 
seven people if everybody still votes, or six people if Bowie gets to take one away. I just hope that it can still happen. And let, let's let's go through both scenarios here. Let's say Bowie does take someone's vote away. It would probably be Matt. So then Riley would need six votes to stay. Uh, she'd have Jag and Blue, of course. Um, if, you know, Izzy gets hyped up again and convinces Sari, that could be four right there. And if she convinces Sari hard enough, then she could get Jared. And then Corey, I feel like he'd be down for for screwing over Heisem. I feel like I feel like Corey is Team Fun Feeds. America, maybe, but that would still be six. That's six right there out of eleven. And if Matt can vote, then. I'm not saying this is my prediction. I'm saying this could happen. And listen, last year, Taylor was in jeopardy for, like, the first almost three weeks of the game in one way or another. It took her a while to actually start feeling comfortable in that house. But, no matter what, I never gave up on her. And, and she won. I manifested that Taylor would stay, and she just kept staying. It was a struggle every week, but she stayed in that house. Almost every week. So, I'm still holding out hope that that we can get we can get a blind side. I want to see the look on Heisman's face. I want to see the look on Mimi's face. And I want to see the look on Riley's face if she stays. I will never root against Team Fun Feeds. No matter what. As a comedian, I'm always rooting for the funniest possible outcome. And Heisem getting blindsided would be the funniest possible outcome. Okay, that is going to do it for me today for this stream. Thank you to my viewer for watching. I appreciate it. If you're watching this on YouTube, I appreciate it. And I will see you next time. Peace out.